All right, let us begin the webinar. My name is Natasha Cauley. I am the Assistant Sales Manager with Arctic Kingdom, and today it will be my pleasure to present to you the Polar Bears and Glaciers of Baffin Island um, Safari webinar. Now, this is uh, what I call Arctic Kingdom's secret hidden gem. This is my absolute favorite trip that the company offers, and so I'm very excited to be able to present it to you today. So let's dive right in. So we like to start off our webinar just sort of going over, um, you know, the agenda for today and a little bit about Arctic Kingdom. So um, who is Arctic Kingdom and why travel with us? Where are we going? What to expect with the, the safari experience itself, the accommodation style, um, and as well as going through some of our Arctic Kingdom team. So a little bit about Arctic Kingdom. We are uh, celebrating our 20th year in business this year, so we're very excited about that. We are the global leader in land-based travel. We do custom experiences and getaways in the Arctic, as well as about 15 scheduled departures year-round. We've been crafting legendary Arctic adventures since 1999. We really do believe that we are the pioneer of the Arctic safari. So taking what people understand uh, traditionally as the African mobile safari, but bringing that up into the Canadian high Arctic. And we offer polar bear viewing trips almost year round, more than any other tour operator in the world. So why Arctic Kingdom? Well, we have over 20 years of inexperience in the Arctic. We've been safely bringing people to and from the Arctic for 20 years. Um, with our experience in our partnerships, we have unmatched access to remote locations within the Arctic, um, an unparalleled expertise in Arctic wildlife um, and habitat um, and culture in the Arctic. We have experienced staff, um, biologists, naturalists, diver, divers, master dive instructors, as well as the Inuit guide, and they're very important as they've um, been living on this land their entire lives and um, with 5,000 years of experience in the Arctic, we really do hone in on the experience our Inuit guides have throughout all of our departures. We also do a lot of private and bespoke experiences as well. So outside of our brochure, if you could dream it, we can truly make it happen here at Arctic Kingdom. So now we're gonna jump into the safari itself. Now this is the polar bears and glaciers of Baffin Island Safari. This is a trip that departs in August and this is your opportunity to get into the high Arctic above the Arctic Circle and view um, up to 15 polar bears in the week and whales during a time of year that there's lots of sunlight and the best um, temperatures in the Arctic reaching up to about 18, 20 degrees Celsius, which is quite warm. So on this trip, we can see bowhead whales. Um, it wouldn't be completely outside of the box to also see orcas. We utilize our premium safari camp set up on land, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, the experience of the mild weather and the midnight sun, as, as I mentioned, so a lot of the uh, flora and fauna is starting to develop and the temperatures are really nice for hiking and boating during the day. We also offer gourmet food on all of our safaris, so the culinary team uh, will be here. So knowing that while you might be in one of the more remote places that you'll ever travel to, that you'll be eating exceptionally well. Now the location of this trip is, um, it's about four hours north of Ottawa, Ontario, in an area called Kikik Tarjuak Nunavut. But don't worry, you don't need to remember how to say kick, kick, tar, juak. There's a short form to it that we use quite often here, and that is kick. And we're right above the Arctic Circle, um, north of Iowituk National Park. And now Iowituk National Park is a stunning park in the Arctic, but it doesn't have a base camp. This trip here would be the closest thing there is to an Iowituk National Park base camp. So some of the nitty gritty and fine details of this trip, it's a seven day, six night option out of Ottawa. So very tangible to do with your one week's vacation. Um, all the Northern ground and boat transfers are included in the trip. It's essentially all inclusive from Ottawa. Um, once we take a jet into Iqaluit, we will then transfer to a turboprop plane and travel another hour or two into Kikitarjuak. So it's very accessible. 
We offer the services of our Arctic Kingdom trip leaders and our local Inuit guides. All the meals are included and there is no single supplement that is required um, unless you've requested that. So knowing that if you are a solo traveler, you can travel with Arctic Kingdom on the double occupancy rate as long as you're willing to share your accommodation with another traveler of the same gender. So how do we get around on this trip? We are now in the Arctic in a time of year where most of the ice is gone except for the large icebergs that we see all throughout this trip. So we're getting around daily by a boat. There is two boats that we utilize on this trip. There's this large covered boat and then we have an open air boat. And generally our guests will transfer between the two of them to have different experiences while out on the water. Now also worth mentioning, the water in the Arctic is quite calm. So this is not a really bobby um, type of experience on the boat. The, the, the calmness of the water is sort of surreal here. So um, being on the boats all day, it's, it's not a bobby experience as I mentioned, but something that is quite comfortable. And then we do make a lot of stops to go hiking um, and then to have lunch and just to get out onto the, onto the land, which is really nice. Now what to expect is these giant icebergs and I would say that they're the size of some you know, condo buildings, some large corporate buildings that you could see in large cities like New York and London. Um, it's it's surreal to see these, these icebergs and unfortunately not one picture to date does the visual of these icebergs any justice. They're just so big. So what's really nice about this trip in the time of year is that we have lots of sunlight to play around with. We have about 18 to 20 hours of sunshine and we're usually out um, exploring for about 10 to 12 hours per day before we um, go back into camp and enjoy some downtime and some meals. Um, so if you have ever wanted to go to Iowetuk National Park and perhaps you don't want to do the hiking and you, you know that there is not a base camp, um, this option would be the most comfortable way to experience this area of the world. When we're on the safari, we've... Um, we go through this area that's actually coined Iceberg Alley. So although there is icebergs sort of everywhere, there are places where it's even more dense and visually stunning. And what's really neat is when we're low on wildlife for the day, there's just so much beautiful landscape and colors in this area of the world that just have you with your camera out throughout, just snapping away at basically everything you can see. We also hike and kayak at the base of the Coronation Fjord. Um, which is what we're looking at in this picture, actually. So this is some really ancient ice and the sounds and the smells and how quiet it is in this area. It's just, it's just, um, it's just breathtaking. And one word to explain it would be sort of mystical. So what else to expect? The, the wildlife viewing on this trip is mainly for polar bears and for whales, but there's also thousands of migratory seabirds um, that are flying around and enjoying the area. And, and if you're not a birder, I find that when you are on one of our trips, you sort of become very intrigued by the birds that are there because there's many different species, about 30 different kinds, and you're seeing thousands of them. But aside from the birds, we're really there for the polar bears and the whales. And this image here is actually from a trip that I was on in 2016. And um, this is a mother and cub who were sleeping atop the mountain. And they heard our boat. And they were very inquisitive themselves. And they came down from atop the mountain um, to come and smell us and to meet us. And it really seemed like maybe we were the first humans these bears have ever seen. They were very inquisitive. And they stayed with us for about an hour and a half and it was just a surreal experience and then funny enough right after this experience we were able to see a, a lone swimming male bear who um, after ran onto the shore and gave himself a shake which I'll show you a picture a little later on so if you've ever wanted to go to the Arctic and see polar bears but you're not interested in being there in a time of year where it's very cold this is the time. I find that this trip really resonates well with um, couples if uh, one of the couples is a bit um, deterred by the Arctic because of the climate, or families with young ones, um, as well as we do get a lot of women groups for this trip as well. 
So aside from boating around on the, the boat that our guide drives, we have opportunities to get in the water ourselves in these awesome inflatable kayaks. Um, they're actually quite easy to paddle. You don't need to be an experienced paddler, uh, but this is going to get you close to the icebergs, into the calm Arctic waters, and just another check off your bucket list uh, and be able to tell your friends about. We also have snorkeling that is available on this trip. So as long as the weather is agreeable and the opportunity presents itself, we can get you right into the Arctic Ocean and experience some snorkel activity where you'd be able to see some different jellyfish, see how clear the water is, and also seeing the icebergs underwater, which is really neat. So as I mentioned before, um, you can anticipate eating exceptionally well on our trip. It's all, uh, something Arctic Kingdom is actually very proud of. We have um, some very high-end executive chefs that come up and they cater our camps completely. So you're eating three exceptional meals a day. And then we also offer 24 hours worth of snacks and hot and cold drinks as well. Um, so if you're ever a bit peckish, you know that we're, you're able to eat. And then um, having three really hearty meals a day that are going to keep you going. So this is a picture of all the, the flora and fauna that is starting to develop at this time of year. Um, lots of um, purple lavender flowers. We're also getting um, uh, blueberries that we can pick off the ground and even bring back to our chef to make pancakes or muffins. It's, um, it's quite fun to see uh, what is growing in the Arctic. And I even saw a spider there. And I, I'm usually quite scared of spiders, but in the Arctic, um, I saw this spider and it was just so beautiful to see the life that comes alive in the summertime. Uh, we're experiencing the temperatures from 5 to 22 degrees and that's um, 40 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and I just can't mention just how beautiful it is to have so many hours of light in the day. It really uh, recharges you. So we do utilize the Inuit guides on our trip and they really allow you to kind of pick their brain about um, their life experiences while living in the Arctic. So if you have questions about the wildlife or their way of life or um, the ancient lifestyles of, of the people, the Thule people, they're usually more than willing to really expand upon it. They really enjoy that there are people who are intrigued to learn more about their 5,000 years worth of history in the Arctic. So if you are looking for your next family vacation, um, I can't say enough good words about this. Uh, we can cater to children as young as six, eight years old on this trip, although our minimum age policy is, is 12. This would be one of the trips that we'd be more inclined to have a younger client on because of the temperatures, because we're on land versus the ice. So if you're still looking for your family summer vacation. We do have some availability for this um, upcoming August. So do let me know. But it's also great for solo travelers, for, you know, smaller groups or a couple as well. It's a really well-rounded trip. So the accommodation style on this trip is the premium safari camp on land. Our yurts are very um, well appointed. They're quite humble, but well appointed. So you can expect to have a memory foam mattress inside of your um, accommodation. The bed setup can either be king or two twins. Um, you'll have some seats, you'll have a light, you'll have a desk in your, in your yurt as well as an area to hang your clothes. So it's really everything that you need as well as a heater. You definitely want to stay warm. Um, you'll find that you don't need to use your heater um, all the time with this trip because of the climate, but just knowing that it's there for those cooler nights. Um, because of the remoteness of our locations, this trip does have a shared washroom yurt. So it's actually two three-piece washrooms inside of one yurt with on-demand hot water, um, as well as a flushable toilet and um, on-demand hot hot and cold water sink. So knowing that you're in a remote area where there's no hotels, but that you have a well-appointed bathroom to be able to use every day for your needs. Here is an aerial shot of the camp. So 
you can just see how breathtaking it would be to wake up in this environment. I always make jokes as if um, the poles ever switched, this would be the best beach location in the world. Um, there's white sand beaches here, black sand beaches, rock beaches, and you can just see if you look over on the left bottom side of the screen, the waters are clear and tranquil. It's, it's an absolutely stunning environment to travel to. Here's just another one of those large icebergs. So again, we're, we're trying to do some justice to the size of them here. Uh, this iceberg here could be more than a kilometer long, I would say, and we're, we're likely quite far back. And that's one thing that's um, quite neat in the Arctic. Everything looks closer than it is because everything is so big. It's just really great. Um, you can play with your camera a lot um, or even just taking in the views alone. There's something that happens in the Arctic where you just feel really disconnected from the crazy world beneath you and just really connected to nature and, and yourself while here. Here's another great image of when we had this mother and cub encounter on this trip. In this trip, um, these polar bears, what they're doing, so they are going through their summer hibernating um, time of year. So they're sort of walking around slowly, feeding on what they could find. This is not their hunting season. So they're sleeping and they could be quite inquisitive because their days are slow. So what we'll find is we'll come across bears and they'll come to us for a little bit and then they'll they'll run off. But you also get some some bears that, you know, they don't really want to see the humans, but we're able to see them from a distance. So I would have to say that um, from the bears that we see from a distance and from up close, you can expect to see about 10 to 15 bears on this trip. So it's a really great trip actually for polar bears. And what I also really enjoy is that these bears are swimming quite often. So it keeps their coat really white. It works really well for your images. And I've also found that a lot of the bears in this area are very healthy and they're very plump and they, they're not tagged like some of the bears that are more south in Churchill. Um, so if you're really looking for that nice dark white bear image, this might be the trip for you. And as I mentioned, we saw a swimming bear after. So it's neat to see the different activities. You can see bears sleeping. You can see them traversing along the cliff sides on this. You can see them walking on the beach. And then you can see them swimming as well. Also, a few years ago in this area, we have located a bowhead molting area. You know, we haven't been fortunate enough to see the activity year after year, um, but this activity is extremely rare and most molting sites are known in the world. The one that we found here was an unknown molting site. So we really are adventurers and, uh, adventurers and explorers where, when we're up in the high Arctic. We're going to just find things and walk on land uh, on land that maybe someone has never walked on before. So it's always really exciting. You can never tell what each day will bring either. So we we have some I, uh, a set itinerary in the extent that we know that we're going out boating every day. We know that we're gonna stop for lunch on land. Uh, we know that we have the kayaks and the snorkel gear, but really every day is just sort of a surprise. You can get a lot of whale activity one day, you can get a lot of bear activity the next day. You can have a great kayak along the icebergs another. So it's a really well-rounded trip and I just cannot emphasize that enough. It's a great opportunity for someone who thinks that they might just come up into the Arctic one time. And of course, we're always just looking to have fun and taking some great pictures that you could share online and with family when you return. And this just gives you an example of sort of how the ice is scattered. Um, and it, it looks maybe that it's not very large, but these panes of ice below this lady here are probably quite big. Same with when we boat along the icebergs here. It's just almost like you're going forever along one piece of ice. So. It's again mystical, mystical, and the landscape is just breathtaking. So, if you are a hobby photographer um, for landscape or a professional photographer for landscape, I really can emphasize this area, just having these beautiful peaks and valleys and ice. And uh, you could see how we can sort of play with our imagery on this one. 
So now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our team. So our owner, Mr. Graham Dixon, is uh, has started this company himself in 1999. He started it after going up to the Arctic with a few friends on a diving trip. He fell in love with the land and the culture and the wildlife, and he knew from then that he needed to start a company and, and bring the world into the Arctic. He really envisioned it as being an accessible place. So a top from our or down from our president, we have our, you know, our entire sales and marketing staff. We have our expedition leaders, our Inuit guides who we absolutely love and respect. And we have our executive chefs and assistants, as well as a very important role as the camp manager. And the camp manager takes care of everything in camp so that when you return day after day, you're coming into a great experience within the camp. We also have biologists and nat naturalists that are available on our trips as well. So this is me, a picture of me on this trip actually, just smiling in front of an iceberg and I'm pretty sure this smile was plastered on my face the entire time. Um, but what this slide is representing that is that I'm part of the sales team. So if you have any questions after this webinar today, um, I would love to answer them. I've been on this trip as well as my colleague Allison, and we're available nine to five Eastern Standard Time, Monday to Friday, and even a little bit outside of those hours too. Um, so if you ever would like to have a call or maybe a conference call with your family to discuss this trip, we are absolutely open to that. And then after the sales pro uh, process, we have an entire operations team that fully makes you aware of everything you need to know before you go on to your safari. So you're going to be absolutely prepared. You essentially just need to show up in Ottawa. So here's another picture of me and our elder Billy on this trip. Um, I really like this picture because, again, you can just see that smile plastered, plastered on my face, and that is um, how I was the entire trip. So if you would like to book, please uh, do not hesitate to email or call one of these numbers here or at that email address below, or perhaps you've received an email from me in the past, and so you can simply just reply to that email, and I'll be right in touch with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was a quick one today, but I hope that I've intrigued you enough to get you um, to get you to email or call or ask some questions. Uh, like I said, this is amongst my favorite trip that we offer because of the temperatures and the landscape and the beautiful bears. Um, so if you're looking for a great uh, summer vacation and you still haven't booked anything for 2018, please do not hesitate to call. We have some limited space available on our two August departures. If not, we will be beginning to book into 2019 next week. So get yourself on the waiting list. All right, everybody, be well, and we hope to see you again on the next webinar. Bye.